America's Republican Party Policy Committee meets in Washington. Elected as chairman and head of the Labor Committee is Senator Taft. Other key jobs go to Colorado's Milliken, New Jersey's Hawks, and Brooks of Illinois. With a Republican majority in the Senate, it is virtually certain that from among these men will come the next President of the United States. From Taft and his colleagues come plans for the legislative program ahead. Sharing the position of top presidential favorite is his partner in leadership, Senator Vandenberg. Together they will control the Senate and, it may be, the destiny of the United States. Hopes for new improvements in Anglo-Russian relations fly high as Field Marshal Viscount Montgomery leaves for Moscow. Well equipped against the Russian winter's 40 degrees of frost, Monty wore a lamb's wool coat given him by the Swiss Army. At the send-off, he surprised everybody by going publicity shy. He wouldn't speak for the newsreel cameras. Seeing him off at Bassingbourne Aerodrome was Russian Colonel Gorskov. In his tour of the Soviet Union, Monty hopes to meet Generalissimo Stalin, as well as many old war comrades. This year, there was something new at Scotland's Powder Hall Handicap. Run at Edinburgh, it's the biggest event in professional running. Bookmakers are allowed on the course. In less than 13 seconds of flashing feet, the thousands of pounds will change hands. The hero of the day is Bill Spence, the winner of this 130 yards race. To T. Williams goes victory in the mile handicap. A little breathless, but a worthy winner. The coveted trophy, the Powder Hall Cup, goes to Spence. Winner in 12.14 seconds of the 130 yards main event. To Spence and his trainer go the congratulations of ex-champs, and from Mrs. Wood, the first prize of 150 pounds. Marsha Shertok, Jewish agency executive member, recently released from detention in Palestine, states the Jewish point of view. Palestine is in the news today, on its shady side. Innocent people are being injured and killed. This terrorist campaign is a gruesome and hateful result of an abnormal and unbearable situation. The root of the trouble is policy, or the lack of it. 30 years ago, the British government promised to help the Jews re-establish themselves in Palestine. In 1939, hard pressed by the Hitler menace, the government decided to appease the Arabs and to put an end to Jewish immigration. Then came the war, when out of every four Jews in Europe, three lost their lives. For the survivors, Palestine is the only hope. But today, two years after victory, they are still in camps, and those reaching Palestine are sent away. The Jews cannot give up their right of return to their national home. They have no other. They claim justice. 